we got to do something about this purple paint job because I just can't take it anymore. So I'm going to get started on repainting this thing. I'm going to do it on a budget. I uh, should be able to do it for about 250 in materials, about 100 for primer, 100 for the paint, and then we'll say another 50 bucks for sandpaper, masking tape, all that kind of stuff. So this poor thing's been neglected and repainted at least, I think, twice. It's got silver in the areas that have never been painted. Then there's some white body panels, obviously, like the hood. And then there's the purple spray paint. So you can see the purple spray paint was done without any prep work at all. It's got, probably this was all missing paint underneath the original paint. We've got some other weird spots. We'll find out what those are. Uh, here you can see the original paint had been flaking off. There's the original paint right there. Another area where the original paint had all flaked off. But overall, it's not too bad. A couple little dents to fix. Got one right here. We're pulling that out. And there's a couple small ones on the hood. We'll be pulling those out. And some other kind of basic minor sheet metal work. Front bumper's pretty rough. This was probably hit by something. But overall, nothing too insane. So, first step. It's going to be remove everything that you can remove. It's pull the mirrors, pull all the trim that I can. Might pull the top because I'm probably going to replace it anyways. Uh, put it up on jacks, pull the tires off, pull all the lights. You get the idea. And the inside of the trunk is red, so that's probably a replacement panel too. Yeah, a little bit of overspray on that tail light there. You should use more than one inch masking tape if you're going to spray paint your car. All right, so I'm going to get started on pulling all those pieces off, and we'll come back when I've got everything stripped down. car is all stripped down. I pretty much removed everything you can remove. It's a whole lot easier to remove it than to mask it off. So everything's pulled off, door handles, trim, and all that good stuff. So next, what we're going to tackle is body lines. So what I mean by body lines is panel fitment. So here's a good example on the front of the car. And my headlight and my fender are below my front bumper cover. And then over here, nothing lines up. So the first thing you want to do for your panel alignment is do a little investigating. So if you look in here, it looks like this is assembled incorrectly. That could be causing part of it. Uh, we also have some damage to the fender here. So this fender could have been damaged downwards. So the first step in correcting this type of issue where there's multiple panels coming together is to figure out which panel is the immobile panel. So what I mean by that is the front bumper cover is bolted solidly to the frame here. So this edge right here is my edge that can't be moved easily. You can move any edge with enough effort. So what I need to do is make these two edges match up with this edge. The first thing I'm going to do is determine the height I need here. Now with this car it's pretty easy because the headlights are adjustable. So all I need to do is turn this until my edge lines up. So now I've got a good lineup right there and now my fender's really low. What probably happened is this got damaged, somebody lowered the headlight to make this body line look good, and that was the result. So the next step is I'm going to pull the bumper cover off and we're gonna take a look at the sheet metal under here and see how we can raise this up to meet the headlight line. Okay, so now we got a little better look at what's going on under here. Obviously there's been some damage. Uh, that duct tape's not OEM. So this piece of metal here is supposed to be behind the fender, and it's not. So I'm going to move that to behind the fender, and that should help a little bit with raising this up. Now the good thing about sheet metal is it's usually flexible and if it's on a smaller lighter car it's even more flexible so sometimes all you gotta do is manhandle stuff a little bit. So I'm just gonna grab this fender, the back end of the fender is bolted down, I'm just gonna grab this and bend it. Alright so that got us closer but our bolt hole doesn't line up now. If we take a step back, you can kind of see where the uh, crux of the problem is here. This obviously had some damage in the past, at least twice. Once, they replaced these pieces from a different car that's blue. And then the second time, this happened. So probably what we got going on here is this section of the subframe is slightly down from this damage. So once I can get this fender to line up nicely, right here with the light, I need to make this metal come up a little bit so that hole lines up. Now you can re-drill the hole, that's not really too big of a problem, but then your bumper might not line up, 
everything else might not line up so the more you can do to line it up like OEM the better so I'm gonna try to figure out how to get a chain on this and try to tweak this a little bit here's my setup I got a chain fall to a beam and then it comes down to the car so I'm gonna use the weight of the car to hold everything down and I'm gonna pull up on this point and we should see this hole start lining up. Alright, so you can see that that helped a lot. We're a lot closer. We're still a little bit low on the fender when our hole lines up. But we're a lot closer than we were, so I'm going to do that again. And when I do it, I'll probably jump on the car there and give it some downward bounce and maybe we'll flex this a little more. That right there might get us where we need to be. We're real close, holes lined up pretty good. So now I'm gonna throw the bumper back on and we'll see how our alignment is. And that is not bad at all. Uh, this is a track car, so for me, this is plenty good enough right here. Everything's a lot better than it was, but if you're doing something nice looking you can just spend more time keep taking those same steps tweak here tweak there whatever you need to tweak uh, one last step it looks like this headlight metal is bent so over here we're flush and over here we're flush and right here our fender and bumper cover come together real nice but this corner is low so i'll show you how to fix that so this is just a trim removal tool from harbor freight they're pretty cheap so it doesn't matter if you break them so for this again sheet metal is real thin so i'm just going to use this I'm going to flex this corner up while putting pressure down on this side. And that should bend this just a little bit. And that's looking better right there. The last step is this gap right here. You can see it's obviously not even. Again, everything's pretty flexible, so I'm just going to grab this thing and bend it. That's a little better. I'll probably tweak all this a little bit after it's painted and I loosen everything up, but... I'm going to drop the hood and we'll check the fitment of the hood around this edge. And that all looks pretty good. So you want to do all this of course before you start painting because the closer you can get it before you start doing body work, the less body work you got to do. All this is looking a lot better now. I'm going to go around the car and do a similar process on all these corners. So the hood is sitting up from the fender a little bit. This is probably damage from the hood coming this far back. Again, real flexible. So I'm just going to Give it some CPR. You can see I was able to just push on it and tweak it down just that little bit. Again, the more of this you do before you start sanding and filling, the less work you got to do. Here's a selection of tools I'm going to be using for the body work. Over here I've got just a cheap dent removal tool kit. And these work pretty good. This is just off Amazon. There's a bunch of different types. They just use a glue gun and some dent pullers and I'm going to be pulling some small dents with that. And I've got my DA sander and sandpaper for that. I'm just using 80 grit. Then I have an assortment of sanding blocks and sandpaper. This is the best one you can get. If you hate bodywork, get this stuff. It'll make your time it'll just fly by. Cuts everything in half. So these are 3M blocks. These are a lot better than the black Dura blocks. They do cost more, but these are a lot stiffer and uh, I just like them a lot better. They use the Velcro type. Sandpaper, which is this stuff. Get the Velcro. You don't have any sticky glue that way. It holds on to these a lot better. You can take the paper off, switch grits, save the paper, put it back on, switch back and forth. So definitely helps a lot. This is the way to go. I'm not going to do too much block sanding on this car because it is a budget paint job. And I'm not looking for perfection for the track car. So probably won't see too much of this stuff, but we're going to use some of this stuff. Now that I'm happy with all my body lines, Gaps are mostly there, everything's where I want it to be. We'll get started with our sanding and dent removal first. The first two steps are to sand the paint down and correct any dents. You can do this in any order you want. You can go around the car, you can find the dents, you can correct them, then you can sand. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand and wherever the sandpaper doesn't reach, that's where my dents are. It's just an easy way to identify them. It's not really faster one way or the other. Uh, it's just whichever way you wanna do it or if there's a third way you want to do, it's fine. So I'm going to start sanding and we're going to see our dents appear.
we'll cover a little bit about how to use a DA if you've never used one before. So if you know how to use a DA, skip ahead a couple minutes. So this is your DA. It stands for dual action sander. So one action is spinning. The second action is it wobbles, basically. So that's why it's called a double action. It gives you a better finish when you're sanding. You don't want to use an orbital buffer or anything like that that only has one type of action. Here's our door panel. We've got a couple things going on. So we've got a convex curve and we've got a large convex curve. And then right in this area, we have a concave curve. So we have three basic ways we need to use the sander on this panel. So on the large surfaces that are either flat or slightly convex, you want it as flat as possible. You don't want to roll it. You don't want to dig in with an edge. You want to keep it flat on the panel. And you want to keep, you want to keep this thing moving. When you sit in one spot, you do a few things. One, you sand that one area more than the rest of the areas and you'll have a dip in your paint. The second thing that does is it heats up the panel locally and that can cause the metal to expand just in that area and that causes the panel to warp and buckle. So that's the first area is our large flat. You want to keep the sander as flat as possible and keep it moving. So what you're looking for as you sand is you're looking for a fairly uniform paint removal in your area. So as you see, it started thinning out semi-evenly and then started clearing up evenly. And that means I've got even sanding pressure on the whole area. So next is the tighter convex surface. And for these, what you want to do is you don't want to move straight up and down. You want to move diagonally one direction, then diagonally the other direction. That just gives you a real even cutting action across this whole surface, which will give you a better finished result. So right here is an example of I'm cutting too much on this ridge, so now I'm going to move the sander down here and up here with less action right here to try to even out my cut. So once my upper and lower surface were cut, I just blended them together with a few quick passes and now that's basically done. In this area, I have a concave curve. So you can see where the sander cut the top and the bottom, but not the middle. And this is a natural body line. This isn't a den or anything. So the way you sand inside these with a DA, you are gonna tilt it. You don't wanna go extreme. You wanna tilt it the minimum amount possible. And again, you wanna move diagonally back and forth. That'll give you a nice even cut. So now that, that lower surface is cut, I'm going to go ahead and blend it into this convex surface the same way, diagonally, with some quick passes. Whenever it's concave, I like to go quick, that way you're not cutting in anywhere. And I know you can't feel it, but this is a real nice smooth finish there that I got out of this. So now I'll blend it into these two surfaces with some quick passes. That's the basics of how to use the DA on different, three different curves you're gonna run into. Sharp convex, the broad convex, and then your concave. That's all a sanding car is, is just a series of those three steps over and over and over until you're done. So right here, I've got a little nick in my paint. There's a few ways you can deal with these. If there's absolutely zero rust in there, you can use some glaze and you can glaze that in. If there's rust, you gotta sand it down. Otherwise, you're going to regret it. That's going to bubble up later. So for all these nicks I'm running into, I'm blending them. Basically, when you blend it, you want to go around 20 times the diameter of whatever you sand down to. So if you sand about a half inch, you want to do about a 10 inch circle if you can. You can't always do that, but the more the better. 20 to 1 is the general rule. So I'm going to go ahead and sand this one down to bare metal or close to it. So you can see I didn't focus just on the pinpoint. I worked the whole area and immediately when it disappeared, I had this whole area of primer, it looks like, that was exposed. So this is done. I'm not gonna touch this anymore. I might blend a little bit out here, but I'm not gonna put any pressure in the middle. I'm gonna go with that. That's about 10 inches or so. It's not a hard rule, but that gives me a good finish on that. I ran into a paint situation here on the trunk lid. 
that you might want to know about. So when I bought the car, I noticed that there was blistering on the back here. You can see where there's kind of these little potholes everywhere. There, there. Since they're perfect circles, I figured it was something underneath. It's usually all it is. So if you look at my paint layers here, I have purple spray paint. Then this is a clear coat. Then I have red paint, clear coat, red paint, primer. So the defect is in this layer of clear coat. You can see where I have blisters there, but not in the base coat. So normally when you have something like this, there's a couple causes that could have caused it. First is the clear coat was incompatible with this base coat. I have a feeling this is the original color, so I doubt that, because this is probably the original clear coat. Then you have this other red base coat. So likely this red base coat was incompatible with this clear coat and caused all this blistering. And it just came through all the layers. And this is why it's important if you're not sure to use paint and clear coat from the same manufacturer because then they should be compatible as long as they say they're compatible otherwise you have situations like this and you basically can never cover it up so the best solution is to completely remove that layer and everything above it which i've already done all on this side and i'm finishing up over here it sucks but that's the best way to do it otherwise when you paint on top of this you could react again and even if it doesn't react, you're going to have these little blister holes. If it does react, it's going to be worse. So best just to get rid of it. Second little deal I got going on over here is where there was previous damage and there was body filler that was cracked. And it can be hard to see, but I've got a bunch of tiny dents. This whole area is dented in. There was some damage over here, which, I mean, that happens. This thing's 30 years old. And this red is not a factory primer, so this was probably the repair primer. So to get into all these little nooks and crannies and get all that filler out of there and primer and everything, this is your best friend right here. Angle grinder with a sanding disc. You can get these at Harbor Freight for like 15 bucks, another 10 bucks or so for the sanding disc arbor and some discs. And that lets you just get in there and you can grind away, get it all down to bare metal because we have to fill this in and smooth it out. Other than that, everything's going pretty good. Just those two situations going on. So I'm going to keep on keeping on. Now it's time for everybody's favorite, body filler. So the trunk deck here has a whole bunch of dents. You can see I sanded it pretty flat, but I got a lot of dents back here. It's a trunk lid. They're kind of lightweight, not a surprise. So the bigger ones I sanded all down to bare metal. And a lot of this you can apply over primer, you can apply it over paint, you can apply it to bare metal. All depends on which one you're using. This is my favorite. It is Z-Grip by Evercoat. Uh, it's not the most expensive. It's only like 35 bucks a gallon. But what this has that a lot of the other ones don't is this thing is really easy to sand. This is almost like uh, sanding foam or something. I don't even know how to describe it. It's great. It doesn't gum up your sandpaper or any of that stuff. Now Evercoat does make some higher end fillers. There's like a gold one. I've never used any of the other ones. I just stick with this one, the Z-Grip. It's green, it's cheap, and it works really good. You don't need anything fancy to mix up your body filler. They sell like little, uh, I don't know what they're called, like metal mixing plates. They sell plastic mixing plates. Just use cardboard. Throw it away when you're done. These are the sticks I prefer. You can get these at Lowe's. You get about like 40 of them for a dollar or something. I don't even remember. They're cheap. So we'll mix up about that much. That'll be good for the first skim coat. First step is to clean your surface. I'm just using lacquer thinner. You can use any of the common solvents. Before you wipe it down, I didn't show you, but I'd recommend blowing it off with air. That just gets any deposits out of any little nooks and crannies. If you wipe it down first, then those Deposits of dust will turn into like a gummy buildup and it'll stay inside those little spots. So blow it off with air, then wipe her down. So there should be some mixing instructions with your kit. Follow uh, whatever it says to follow. When in doubt, always add more hardener. You can buy these separately. So when you mix your filler, little tip, use one to mix, one to spread, and this is why. 
if you look right on the surface of this one that I mixed it with, there's unmixed filler in there. That won't harden. So I like to just scrape that off a little bit, mix that in, throw this one on the floor. And now this will be my spreader. Just gonna start at this end, work my way over. Okay, I got all my filler put on my trunk lid. Went through and hit those spots. Since this is a track car, I'm not trying to go crazy and make this whole thing like glass. Just hitting the low spots that are gonna be obvious. 90% of this is going to be sanded off. Something I didn't show you was always have some backup spots. So when you mix your filler, you're probably going to mix a little bit extra. So I had some other spots that I had cleaned off ready to go just in case I had extra. And those are over here. I hit that spot, that spot, and then I had just enough to do two more spots on this side. So I got all those covered too. That way you just don't waste as much filler. So now we're going to let these cure, and then we'll sand them off. So the next day my filler is all cured, so now we're going to get sanding it. Since this is a budget paint job on a track car, I'm not looking for perfection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a DA with 80 grit to knock down all these high surfaces. Then we'll come in with a block. If this was something more important, I'd start block sanding right now, probably with like 120 grit. So I'm going to get these all knocked down. Okay, so now I'm all sanded down with 80 grit. Now we're going to switch to block sanding. For block sanding the trunk, I'm going to use these three blocks. This is just their really long, big block. I don't know what else to call it. Got a teardrop shaped block, and this radius will be good for getting in the back of the trunk lid here. And then I have a tighter radius round block, again, for this trunk lid area. I'm going to use 320 grit. Stuff is pre perforated so this is the 3m purple clean sanding sheet roll they call it i don't know just kind of measure how many perforations you need for whatever size block you're using bend it rip it there you go So we're going to use this in the same way I showed you how to use the DA with the crisscrossing diagonal patterns. You want to go with the crown, I'm going to go this way, then I'm going to go this way, then I'm probably going to work it this way a little bit. I'm going to kind of do that all over the place. And you don't want to just focus on just the area where the filler is. You're going to come way out here and you're going to run it across that. And that'll help knock down any high spots and that way you won't create a dip there with the sander block. So when you're sanding, you want to make sure you get rid of the scratches of the previous step, which in this case was the DA. So if we zoom on in, you can see right here, these are DA swirls, and then there's no swirls here. It means that I've removed the swirls in this area, so I'm probably good on this piece. So I just need to keep working until I get all these swirls out. That lets me know I'm done with this step. So now my swirls have all disappeared from around my filler area, so that means I'm level all the way across here. You can see right here these little dips, those were dents in the trunk lid, or now I'm flush. That was my main dent right there, you can see the shadow where the filler is thicker. So that part's done, I'll just keep moving across here. So now I'm happy with the way the whole top of the deck lid works, so now we'll move into the concave surfaces. One of the great things about the 3M system is it's Velcro, so now I can take the same piece of sandpaper, I can peel it right off the block, 
I can put it right on my teardrop block. So there we go. So with the teardrop, I'm doing the same thing, but you don't want to go up and down. Again, you want to move diagonally, crisscrossing pattern. My block sanding is complete, so the last step I'm going to do on this car is I'm going to DA this with 220 grit. Moving on to the hood, I've got this all sanded down with 80 grit DA, and what that does is it shows me all my low spots. So all these little white dots that you're seeing, these are all dense. Since the white was my top layer of paint, that's a low spot. So on the hood, because this is going to be a track car, I want to add louvers or vents, which you put those in the area of low pressure, which on the Miata is right around here. So because of that, I don't want to use any body filler on most of this hood. That way when I it's painted, I go to put the vents in. That way I'm not cracking out filler and my paint's not chipping off. So I'll pull these as best I can, but not looking for perfection. I do have one large dent here in the humpy hump. And I will probably use a little filler on that. Maybe on that dent. There's another dent on the front of the hump over right there. So the hump I won't count because I'm not going to put holes in that. But the rest of these, I'm going to try to pull them out. So what I'm using is just a paintless dent removal kit. These are all over Amazon. They're pretty cheap. It's like 50 bucks for a whole set. So all you do is you glue these guys on and then you pull the dent out. One thing I should mention too is I did clean my hood off before I started this. Just wiped it all down real quick to get the dust, otherwise this stuff won't stick. The kits come with different tools. I'm just going to be using this slide hammer one. I'm just gonna give each one of these a quick hit and then I'll show you how to check to see if you helped remove it. So now the way I'm gonna to check to see if I made any progress is I'm just gonna run the DA over these spots again really quick and see if the paint comes off, that's it. About half my spots got a little bit of improvement. So up here I've got one dent that didn't show much progress with one hit, so I'm going to do a couple small hits, try to work that out a little bit. I will DA it again, see where we're at. Now you can see just with running the DA over there, it's improved. It's not completely gone, but getting better. Might do that one more time to this spot and then call that one good. So overall after working on this dent I'd say it's at least 50% of what it used to be. It's well within my acceptable limits for this project. Basically you just need to work on each dent until it's within your acceptable limit and then just move on to the next one. So I'll keep going on this hood. Now the body's all prepped Got all my dents fixed to where I feel they're acceptable for this project. I did end up using a little filler in the hood back where I know that I'm not going to put any cooling vents. The whole car is sanded down to 320, which is as far as I'm going to go for this project. That'll be a smooth enough finish. I've got the easily removable body panels removed. The trunk, the fender, front cover, other fender. I have the hood unbolted. I'm going to prime and paint the underneath the, of these panels first and then I'll put them on the car and paint and prime the tops on the car. That just makes it a little bit easier. On these, I'm not going crazy on prep underneath. I'm just going to wipe it down, lightly scuff it, and paint it. So that's where we're at. This video is getting kind of long, so I'll do the next one on primer, taping it off, 
glazing any pinholes that I'm going to have in the primer, things like that. So that's it for this one. See you in the next one.